We are Sex the Bomb. One, two, three, four. This is the beginning of the song. Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and we are here with episode one of Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. This is a monumental series. This is a monumental achievement of a series because this is this should not exist think about it this is an anime that is produced by edgar wright who's behind the live action scott pilgrim movie it has all of the same cast members from the live action movie returning every single one you have mary elizabeth winstead you have michael sarah you have brandon routh you have may whitman you have everyone returning to to repri reprise their roles that in some cases made a lot of them famous or at least more famous than they were before. Like, honestly, I did not know who Michael Sarah was before Scott Pilgrim. But whenever I think of Michael Sarah, that is the first role I think of now. And honestly, same with Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Although she's done, obviously, a lot of other things. Um, easily the role I think of her for. And while there's some, like, obviously, Brandon Routh and... Uh, whatnot who have been in a lot of other things and are known more for other things um may whitman for example i know her more as katara from avatar the last airbender or amity from owl house um but roxy richter is still up there for me um and always will be the fact that this series was able to get edgar wright back was able to get all of the same cast back is insanely monumental it's such a big deal it should not be possible but it is um and, and this series is the the art styles in the style of the comic it's supposedly from what i've heard going to be more accurate to the comic i've only seen the original teaser i have not seen any other trailers for this because there's going to be some differences. And I don't want to be spoiled on what those are. Um, I, I, I don't want to be spoiled on like any of the any notable differences. Uh, because even though I've seen the movie, this is kind of a fresh experience for me. It's like watching the live action One Piece. Although I've seen One Piece many, many times. It's a different experience because it's being handled very differently. Obviously, big difference, though, here is that, again, the original cast are all back. Um, plus, it's going from live action to animation instead of the other way around. Very, very different kind of vibes there. So, yeah, I'm very excited for this. I, I, I've been really, really hyped for this. So, of course, the day it comes out, I'm not going to wait. Um, luckily, Adventure Time just happened to be finishing up uh, for Season 7, so I'm able to just switch right into this, and yeah. Uh, like I said, very excited for this, very excited to hear everyone back in their roles. Um, I assume that they're probably going to sound a little different, um, just because it's been so long, and also their voice acting instead of... Um, on camera acting so they're probably going to perform it slightly differently which is fine um like i said i saw the teaser trailer and yeah they, they definitely sounded a little different from what i remember and i've seen scott pilgrim versus the world i've seen the movie very recently actually like maybe only a couple weeks ago um so i'm i'm still it's it's still very fresh in my mind I, I'm I still have that very much in there. I'm just very curious as to how this is going to go. 
Um, there's been a lot of hype surrounding, and I really hope this does well. There's eight episodes, and I, I assume this is going to be mostly the same story as in the live action, just with some other stuff added in. Uh, some stuff that's probably in the comics that wasn't in the movie for time reasons and whatnot. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I'm very excited to see how this is done. Because I really love the movie. I, I've seen it so many times. I'm surprised I don't have a physical copy of it. Um, honestly. Um, and I'm only hoping that this can really live up to it. Now, I've seen most of the designs for the characters before because you know the comics have existed longer than the movie i know what the characters look like in the comics um so not much is going to really surprise me in that regard um i'm gonna like recognize most of the characters right away basically um the soundtrack i believe i want to say it's if I get this name wrong, I apologize, but I want to say it's Anamanaguchi. I believe they're back doing the soundtrack, which, yeah, amazing. Um, but I, I, I just don't know how this is going to compare and contrast to the original movie. I've never read the comics. I never played the video game that came out like a few years back or something, um, which is more comic based and everything. Um, I have seen the death battle with Ramona Flowers, though. I, I can say that. Um, I believe she faced Amy from Sonic, uh, because they both have big hammers. <laughs> I think it, I think it was Amy. I don't know. It's been it's been years since that came out. I believe. Um. But yeah, I'm just like, this is my shit. Like the video game inspirations, the the comic book styling of it all. The great, the great voices that I'm, I just associate with these characters. It's like, yeah, I'm excited as hell. Um, also, apparently the opening was released a couple weeks ago on Netflix, but I ha or on uh, YouTube, but I haven't seen it yet. So I, I'm excited to see what the opening is like too. Um, I'm just excited, just in general, very excited, very hype, so much hype. Um, we're just going to get into this and hope for the best and see what this first episode, uh, gives us. So, if I had to guess, I'm thinking this first episode is mostly going to be the, the build up to, like, introducing our characters and having Scott first meet Ramona. Um, Knives is going to be brought into it all, um... Neil is going to be brought in. All, all, all of that's going to be brought in. The, the seven evil exes thing is probably not going to be in this episode. That's probably not going to be brought up until episode two. Um, this is probably just going to be like the first meeting. If I had to wager. Um, probably have some sex bob stuff in it. Uh, all of that fun. All of that jazz. So yeah, let's let's get going. See what see what we got in store. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. Uh, so that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. That was pretty much as great as it, I feel it could be. From the really fantastic animation and lighting, to um, just obviously the video game references, um, just nerdy references in general. I mean, there was X-Men, too. Um... The characters, all the voice acting, obviously fantastic. Everyone returning, like, they, they really just own these roles. They really do. And, uh, the story is mostly the same, it seems. Um, just, 
a few more things added in, a little more drawn out. Um, one big change was having the evil exes uh, introduced before Matthew Patel's arrival. Well, sort of. Ha showing the the showing Gideon pulling the strings and calling in Matthew and everything behind the scenes that was not originally in the movie um I'm assuming it probably was in the comic though the graphic novel um like I said I wouldn't know I haven't read the graphic novel um but that that was definitely left out of the of the movie but most of the stuff in here like you can very much compare like obviously there's some differences like having ramona work for netflix instead of amazon um obviously i get the joke there with you know this series being put out on netflix but also it's an interesting change nonetheless um it, it kind of gives this a certain date because delivering dvds from netflix netflix doesn't do that anymore so it gives it a certain frame of date uh, for like oh yeah this is this takes place around this time period when Netflix did do that. Um, Amazon, like, Amazon could basically be any time. You could get packages delivered from Amazon for for any time period since Amazon started doing that. Which is pretty much Amazon's entire thing from the beginning, so... This, this dates it more, but in a good way. It, it doesn't feel dated, like, it, it, in a bad sense to where it's like, oh, this is unenjoyable or it feels out of place because of dating. No, it feels like this is meant to be dated to this time period, and you understand that from this. Um, the music is phenomenal. The music was phenomenal in the, in the live action, in the movie, and it's phenomenal here. Um, it's it just, it just so goddamn good. Um, like I said, um, I, I believe in the reaction, um, the music is, uh, has always been one of the highlights of Scott Pilgrim for me. Like, among everything else, the music is just, it's so good. And I, I can understand some people not liking it because it's not maybe their type of music, the genre and style they tend to like. But I, I have a very diverse taste in music, like... I like music from pretty much every genre. Like, I'm not, like, just rock and roll or anything. I like rock. I like rap. I like country. I like metal. I like pop. I like a little bit of everything. As long as I just think the song is good, basically. Um, or, in some cases, the artist. But mostly, it's a song-by-song -song basis. Because even with some artists I really love, like Gorillaz, I don't like every song they put out. So, um, I, I typically judge it song by song. Um, the music for Scott Pilgrim, it, it's just like, it's, it's just in that sweet spot for me where it's like, it's just, it's all good. There is not a single bad piece of music in Scott Pilgrim. Um, and so far with this first episode of this new series, it seems to be carrying over. Not a single bad piece of music here. It's just, it's just so goddamn good. And on top of that, like I said, you have the voice actors returning, uh, the, the actors from the movie returning. Um, and all of them are just owning these roles again. Even someone who's not, maybe not as major of a character like uh, uh, Kieran Culkin as Wallace, it's like even he just is owning this role again. It's just like, yeah, this is just like, he's back. Wallace is back. And it's just like, it's so good. And seeing certain scenes that are like directly referencing, or, or directly from the, I assume the uh, graphic novel, but also that were directly in the movie and seeing them done maybe slightly differently is great as well. Like, uh, for example seeing um the 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 scene where scott is talking to ramona against the wall and everything and he's talking to her about sonic and stuff and how there in the 90s there were two cartoons going on simultaneously with the same voice actor for sonic and it's like yeah 
I believe one of them, by the way, was just called Sonic the Hedgehog, I think, and the other one was Sat AM. Um, unless, I don't know. I, I remember Sat AM specifically. That's the one I was into. Um, um, which wasn't actually called Sat AM. That's just what people call it, um, to differentiate it. Um, based on, like, you know, the time it aired and all. Anyway, though, um, but yeah, in the movie, he was talking, like, about Pac-Man and how Pac-Man was, like, originally called Puck-Man and everything. Um, so, so it's interesting to see that conversation slightly changed, uh, from Pac-Man to Sonic. Two very classic, uh, video game mascots, um... But I, I like that the that the little fun fact m moment there is different, because um, those of us who have seen like the the movie and everything, it's like giving us a different little fun fact there. It, it's just a good idea. I like that. Um, and then obviously the ending is slightly different too, because in the movie I don't believe Matthew uh, defeated Scott at all. In fact, this this actually raises a lot of questions as to how this continues from here. Because if I'm remembering right from the movie, um, and, and obviously I can't remember everything in the movie, uh, even if I did only see it a couple weeks ago, but if I remember right, Matthew comes in, it's like, didn't you see my email? It, it was an email instead of a letter. Um, and, and then they fought, and Matthew like did this like Bollywood dance number. Uh, I believe he had, like, uh, these demon dancer girls as well. And they fought, but Scott did eventually win. But Matthew never defeated Scott first. So I'm thinking this is probably some aspect of it that was maybe in the comic, but was streamlined for the movie. Because, you know, with a movie, you can't have everything. You have to streamline it a little bit even if it's a fairly accurate representation um just because of different mediums and whatnot a movie you only have so much time so it's like yeah with a with an eight episode series if e each episode is around the same time as this it's about 30 minutes per episode um you can insert a lot more because there's more time so, I'm thinking that there's there's a few things that were probably cut out of the graphic novel when it was adapted into the movie originally. And we're going to see a lot of that, that in here. A lot of that uh, new content. And, and that's part of what makes this uh, so much more exciting, too. Like I had said before, um, that's, even though I've seen the movie and everything... That, that makes this more interesting because there's aspects of it that I'm not going to recognize. Stuff about it that's going to be new for me. Even if I know the general sense of where the, the entire thing is going in the end, certain aspects of it are going to be notably different. And that makes it worth watching. That makes it worth reacting to, just like the One Piece live action. Because again, even though with the live action... For One Piece, when I knew where it was going in general, there was a lot of things that were changed, a lot of things that were updated because of, you know, change in medium. You go from an anime series, a raw manga, to an anime series to a live action show, it's like you're going to have to change a lot of things. And in this case, you're going from a comic, a graphic novel, to a live action movie, to now an animated series. So it's like, yeah, there's going to be some changes made. And that's fine. That's great. And I'm excited to see what those changes are because it allows it to feel fresh for me again. Um, but yeah, th this initial episode, it's just, there was so much excitement, so much hype. Like, just, I feel like I was a smiley bitch the entire time. <laughs> Um, just like grinning like a doofus while watching because I was just so into it. Um, and I hope that 
honestly, the entire series continues to give me that feeling. Because I want to feel like a grinning doofus watching this show. It feels good to feel like a grinning doofus. Because it means that I'm enjoying it that much. It means that it's that fun for me to watch. And sometimes you just need a show that is just actively fun to watch. That just brings you that much joy. It's like you can watch all these shows in the world. Some of them that are just like really cool, really uh, intense, really emotional. But sometimes the best shows, sometimes the, the, the ones you want to watch the most are just fun. Are just pure entertainment and joy. And, I mean, what more could you ask for with Scott Pilgrim? It's like, th this, this is not about any kind of big, grand story. It's not about any heavy emotion, emotional shit. Scott Pilgrim's just fucking fun. It's just an absolute joyride. And so, seeing this anime really take that and, and, and go with it is fantastic. And, yeah, I, I just really am loving everything about this. Um, they really, really knew how to sell this right off the bat. And I hope I get to see other people react to this, too. Whether it's, uh, like, big-name reactors that I, I tend to watch, like Blind Wave and Normies. Or even if it's uh, smaller reactors. I just want to see, I want to see people check this out. Even if they've never seen the movie or read the comics. Um, but yeah, this, this one is going to be something fun. This is going to be one that I'm going to really enjoy. Um, so, all of that being said though, uh, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of this first episode of Scott Pilgrim Takes Off? What did you think of the art and animation style? What did you think of the music, the voice acting? Uh, let me know your thoughts on all of that and more in the comments. Uh, feel free to leave anything you want down there, and I will check it out. I'll see your comments, and if I need to respond to them, I will. <laughs> uh, but that all being said, thank you all so much once again for tuning in. I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.